cost accounting, part 11 standard costs and variances. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and our phone number. And a good website, you can find a lot of university websites that have PowerPoints and other support for some of the topics that we're covering, and this is one of them at the bottom of this page. We're continuing our discussion of variances. You saw in the prior video a calculation of material and price variances. And we need to talk about the accounting entry you make once you figure out a variance. And you'll recall from some of the prior cost accounting videos that there's a flow of costs from one account to another. We start off with direct materials and direct labor. Those costs, once we start using them, once we start cutting up the denim and incurring labor and material costs, move from those accounts to work in process. And then when we finish up those pair of jeans and start boxing them up, the costs move from work in process to finished goods. Also need to recall that for asset accounts, we're going to increase an asset account with a debit that is on the left-hand side. And finally, that an unfavorable variance when we're looking at cost, unfavorable be, means more costs than you planned. So let's go over to our journal entry example. And this answers the question, well, what accounting entry do we make once we've figured out a variance? So it's our Levi Jeans factory. We have a variance from standard cost for 2010. And we're assuming 100,000 pairs of jeans produced. And it happens that for direct materials, the denim that we're buying, we planned or budgeted a standard cost of $5 for every pair of jeans. Our actual cost was $6.21. So we spent $1.21 more in actuality than we planned on. If we multiply that by 100,000 pairs of jeans, we spent 121,000 more than we planned, so that's our unfavorable direct material variance. Now, below it is the journal entry that we make to account for it. We are going to reduce by crediting the material account. We are going to increase by debiting the work in process account. But there's a problem. Because what we actually the cost we actually take out of material, the material that we actually used was 121,000 higher than what we planned. So we're taking out by crediting 100, 621,000. But we only budgeted for $500,000 to go into work in process. So we have to count for that difference. That 121,000 is also a debit. It's an unfavorable variance. And that's how we make the journal entry. We now need to talk about looking at the variances in total. That is, for example, for materials, let's look at the total variance for materials, whether it was a price variance or an efficiency variance. We're going to show you a chart in a minute, but let's talk about how the chart's going to look generically. We're going to start off on the left-hand side with our actual quantity, what we actually spent. In the middle, we'll have actual quantity times budgeted price. And at the far left, it's budgeted, budgeted, budgeted quantity times budgeted price. So what's happening is, as we move from left to right, we're moving from our actual costs for materials to our standard or budgeted costs for materials. Let's see how that looks. Moving up to the top of the page, this is our material variance from standard cost for the 2010 budget year. And you'll see at the top, these are numbers that we saw in our prior video on cost accounting, same numbers. For the direct materials, we planned on two yards per pair of jeans at a cost of 250. We actually used 2.7 yards per pair of jeans and we spent $2.30 per yard. So in total, we had differences between standard cost and actual cost. And on the prior video, we figured out a price variance and an efficiency variance. Actual times standard price multiplied by actual quantity gives us a price variance of 54 cents. Unfavorable, we spent more than we thought we would from a price variance standpoint. 
efficiency variance, the difference in the quantity is actual versus standard multiplied by the standard price. We have an efficiency variance that's unfavorable because we paid more than we thought we would. So the price variance is favorable. We paid less per yard than we thought we actually than we planned on. We paid less per yard than we planned on. The efficiency variance is unfavorable because we used more than we planned on. Here's something that's new. We can take this information and plug it into one big variance for material cost. And you can see starting at the left here actual quantity. We're assuming 100,000 pairs of jeans times that $6.21, 621,000. We compare that with our actual quantity times budgeted price. For 100,000 pairs of jeans, we actually use 2.7 yards per unit times a budgeted price of $2.50 per unit for a total of 675,000. The difference between those two numbers, 54,000, happens to be the 54 cents multiplied by $100,000, which is a favorable variance. We spent less than we thought we would. Moving over to the far right, it's budgeted times budgeted, budgeted quantity times budgeted price. 100,000 pairs of jeans. We planned on two square yards per pair of jeans. We planned on $2.50 a yard. We multiply that all together, we get half a million dollars. This is an unfavorable variance because you can see that the number in the middle is higher than 500,000 by $175,000, which means we have an unfavorable variance. So we've accounted for the price variance and the efficiency variance. And you'll see at the very bottom that our variance for all of direct materials is $121,000 unfavorable. So this chart gives you a good overview of the entire variance for materials. For your homework, if you'd like to give this a try to understand the concept, you can try this homework question and email me at ken at stltest.net for an answer. Here is the same information for labor. And what I've given you is 100,000 100, units, pairs of jeans. I've given you the standard information for direct labor, the actual results for direct labor, and asked you to figure out a price variance using the formula, an efficiency variance using the formula, and then to fill in this table at the bottom of the page. And if you like, you can pause or go back over this section of our video to pick up all the information. And again, if you'd like to email me, I can give you the answer via email. That's the end of part 11 of our pre presentation. Part 12 will be on YouTube soon. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You'll find a complete list of videos on the homepage of our website. For live tutoring and live chat sessions using gotomeeting.com, you can go to stltest.net to find out more. You can also email or call the numbers at the bottom. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.